Okay, so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be making some hard surface modeling as a little tutorial. And what I want to explain to you guys is how to build all of these individual shapes that we have over here. So there's going to be a few things that you're going to have to work through. But importantly, I don't want you guys to be intimidated by what you see on screen over here, because all of these shapes, I'm pressing one on my Maya keyboard over here, are actually very simple polygonal shapes that have just been subdivided in a specifically interesting way. This smooth mode that Maya has allows me to not have these harsh 90 degree angles over here. And that's really what's going to help my modeling look a little bit more realistic. So by pressing three on the keyboard, or one, we can reveal the unsmoothed version of a model and reveal here the smoothed version by pressing three. And you'll see that when I smooth an object out, what happens is that it creates these very nice highlights around the edges over here because these edges are slightly curved, very much like they would be in reality. And if we had something here that's at 90 degrees, you're going to notice that there's not really many objects in the world that have that specific shape. So smoothing things out is what's going to allow me to go through all of these different shapes over here. And you'll see that even though they're very blocky to start off with, we can create curves and areas that have hard corners and areas that have smooth curves inside of them as well. And we'll go through and we'll learn how to cut objects which are rectangular in shape and objects that are round in shape into different pieces. And you'll see that if you manage to pick up this hard surface modeling technique, it really opens you up to be able to take any 3D model and create the shapes that you want to make. Importantly, all of these starting shapes that I'm giving you, we're going to turn this plane into this over here. And I always want you to think that these little planes are like components to your models. They're just pieces that could be of bigger things. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and show you guys how to make all of this. Now, the reason why I've made this video is because it's a resource that a guy called Grant Warwick has a, a video tutorial called Harsa Service Essentials. And it's a great tutorial, but I find a lot of my students, they find that they can't follow it, especially as beginners, because that tutorial is actually made in 3ds Max. So really what I wanted to do is just make a Maya version of pretty much the same tutorial, but show you what tools we have in Maya to actually make this, you know, quickly and effectively. And I'd recommend also for people to check Grant's tutorials out as well. And I'll leave some links to them on the YouTube page below as well, so that you guys can chase up on some things. So first of all, if we have any simple 3D plane, we're always going to want to start blocking out the rough shapes. And that's something I'm going to do right the way through this whole thing. How can I do that? Well, there's many different tools, but I'm going to go into edge mode over here for a second. And I'm going to start using today this new connect tool over here. And the connect tool inside of the modeling tools, if you don't have your modeling tools, it's this little button that's up here at the top, allows me to create a segment perpendicular to the line that I have selected there. I just tap enter and then that means that it will create a new edge very much like the insert edge loop tool would do that as well. If I come over here and I select a single edge and then I double click on an edge to make a ring selection over there and I'll just hide my grid so that you guys can see that a little bit better. Again, I could go through and I could make a selection just by clicking and dragging, as long as I select all of the correct edges like that, turn on my modeling tools, and I will go over here to the connect tool. And you'll see that it will draw a perpendicular line to the ring selection that I've made there. I press enter to confirm it, and I can switch to face mode, select that face over there, and do a simple extrude upwards by clicking on the extrude tool and just pushing on the blue arrow over here, and just lift it up 
like that. There we go. Okay, so this is very much what I mean by blocking things out. Rather than being too concerned about smoothing things from the start, what I want to do is just make the basic shape that I want to do in this low poly block, because this and this, they resemble one another quite closely. Now the next thing that I want to do is if I tap 3, you'll see that by default Maya smooths everything out in this kind of like blobby type of way. And what we need to do is add some more subdivisions into, these, uh, into this block to make it actually have these nice rounded edges like this. The way we can do this is we can do it in many different ways. We can use the connect tool, but we can also use the insert edge loop, which I, if I go into my mesh tools, and I'll just click here so you can see the similarity between the PC version of Maya and the Mac version of Maya. Here you'll see that there's this little tool which is called insert edge loop. And if I click on insert edge loop, it will allow me to click and drag a new loop wherever I want that to go. And I know that if I put two edges, one here, and another one to this side over here. Now if I press 3, you'll see that that blobbiness goes away and I start getting this weird cylindrical look over there, which is not what many people would associate would happen if you just add more subdivisions into an object. Again, if I press Control Z and we undo these, you'll see that I'll go back to my blobby type view. And if I tap 2 on my keyboard, as I've done now, you'll see that this 1 is solid, Two is in between where you can see the cage and this smoothed version, and three is just the pure smoothed version of the object. So if I click on an edge and I put it close to another edge, I'm going to start defining one part of that object, which again, if I go into something like my move tool and I select that loop and I move it up and down, you'll see that what happens is as I move this towards the top edge, the top of this blob gets sharper. If I move it to the bottom, it's going to get rounder at the top, but it's going to start adding an edge down here to the bottom. So by subdividing, what I'm doing is I'm controlling the shape of a curve, but I currently don't need curves right now. I'm just going to go into Insert Edge Loop Tool, click up here, and you're going to see that two edges like this are going to produce this cylindrical effect like that again. So again, if I look at it in unsmoothed mode, you'll see that it actually looks very different. But when I smooth it out, it looks in a very, 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 very different way like this. Now, I can apply this type of thinking to the whole object. And what I'm going to do is go over and go to edge selection mode, and I'm going to use a ring selection. So I'm going to select a ring all the way across the top face of this over here. And now instead of using the insert edge loop tool, I'm going to show you a different tool, which is called the connect tool over here, which we've seen before. But using the connect tool, I can also create a different number of segments. So I can type in two with my keyboard, or I can middle mouse button drag to create more or less subdivisions as I wish. And what I want to do is create two subdivisions like this. And then I'm going to use this pinch tool over here. And the middle mouse button and drag will allow me to move these edges further apart. Again, for effect, I'm going to go over here and go into this in-between mode over there. And you'll see that what will happen is that as I use the pinch tool and I leave this over here and press enter, what's going to happen is boom, it's going to start creating the edges of my rectangle like this. So again, what I'm doing, again, shaded mode, unshaded mode, it's going to scale that out a little bit further like that. Again, what I'm doing is this time I'm going to make a ring selection this way. So I'm going to select those two by clicking and shift double clicking like that to create a ring selection. And I'm going to come over here, I'm going to hit connect again. And again, connect should actually save the previous setting that I was doing over there. So now what I'm doing is I'm adding this little pattern over here of three edges, one next to one another here, three edges, one next to one another there, and there's three edges across the side as well there. I'm going to press enter and then I'm going to smooth that out and you can start seeing that I have this beautiful type of shaded smoothed edge corner there. So again, 
I'm just taking this low poly object and I'm subdividing it so that when it's smoothed, it has these nice rounded corners. You can see down here that this isn't very sharp. You can see that the base of this cube is actually looking fairly curved. So what we want to do is add another subdivision there. Now I'm going to keep using the connect tool, but this area over here, I'm going to show you why it's probably better to use the insert edge loop tool in a second. So again, I could do the same thing as we did before, just shift and click, make a ring, do a connect, leave that like that, and then shift and double click this way, press enter, and sometimes we have to press enter to confirm that with another connect. There we go. And you'll see that now when I smooth that out, the corner here looks a little bit sharper. If it's not sharp enough, double click to make a loop selection. And if we push this towards the actual edge like this, you'll see that that uh, curve will get shorter like that. And again, if I grab this one over here, double clicked on it, use the arrow tool, I can sharpen up that corner there just a little bit more. Now, the reason why I maybe would have done this with the insert edge loop tool instead of the connect tool is because there's something that I don't need here. And this is the tricky part because every time you guys make a 3D shape, you should always be thinking about a certain level of cleanup. And the cleanup is this very specific thing here. I look at the smoothed version of the object and this edge that my connect tool added for me because I was making two connections every single time. If I come over here and I look at this edge here, I'm just going to delete it on my keyboard. So I'm gonna press control backspace and it's gone. And the important thing is you notice that the shape of the object does not change. If the shape of the object doesn't change, it means that that edge there was completely unnecessary. So sometimes it's worthwhile going through your model, and again, this one that's here on this edge by itself, when I smooth it out, I'm gonna press Control Backspace again, I delete it, it didn't change the shape of my object. This is still a plane. If you can get rid of edges that you don't need, get rid of them all the time. And that takes a little bit of experience. For example, if I grabbed this edge over here and I double clicked it, and then I press control backspace, you notice how this changed. Now that change can be very subtle sometimes, but if it changes even just a little bit, there's probably something that means that that edge is important to define this shape. Now, hard surface modeling, you can make many different mistakes but it's important for you guys always to be very comfortable with your selection tools and also be very comfortable with using some of the other tools that we have over here. So what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna go back into object mode, leave this one as complete, and we're gonna go and we're gonna look at the next plane that you have over here, which I've already subdivided for you guys, and we're gonna try and build this shape over here. And it's a lot easier than you might think. Let me move those mesh tools out of the way. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna go into edge mode and a tool that allows me to take an edge and split it into different parts is the bevel tool. So what I want you guys to do is in this plane over here, the one right next to it, I want you guys to grab an edge and go to bevel and just click. Now this bevel over here has been a bit too wide. All it's done is taken that one edge and it has split it down the middle like that, which leaves us this odd shape over here. Now this is gonna be the basis for my little dent over here. And I've made it a little bit bigger than the other previous one that I made, but that's not too much of a problem. Now, if I wanted to take this and actually start making a curve down here, some of you guys might think that you can extrude downwards over here, and that would not necessarily be a bad way of approaching it. Again, for being kind of like consistent with what we're doing, I'm gonna select these two edges by themselves and use the connect tool. And the connect tool, again, I can come into its segments, bring it down to there, and now that segment there is right in the middle, like that, okay? so. The reason why I wanna do that, again, is that the connect tool does not only work with a long selection as well. I don't need to select all of the objects. I can do connections between any two edges that I select as well, or any three edges, or any combination of the above. Always these perpendicular lines are gonna be very useful. And if I grab this over here, and I push this down like that in the Y axis, you're gonna see that this is the basis for my curve. Always feel free to turn on 
the smooth mode as well by clicking three and you'll see that this again is starting to create a curve on my polygons but there's no definition to a hard edge at the top of it and we're going to put that in there so this again is the basis for my curve and importantly as I added that edge there you see that that is a four-sided face and that's a four-sided face so we're always trying to model everything in quads if you're very smart you'll notice that these faces over here are not quads but we'll fix those as we go along so what do I need to do well this design forces me to think that this edge over here has to be a hard edge and what do I mean by that is again if I have three edges and they are very spaced apart, we will get a curve. And if I have three edges very close together, I will get a hard edge like this. So what I'm gonna do is repeat the bevel tool. To make this a hard edge, I'll go into bevel. And again, bevel might be quite exaggerated in its application as well. You can also type in values here. So if you need to be much more precise, you can just type in a number that's smaller than 0 0.1, but that'll do the trick for us quite simply. And you'll see that that selection there of edges will give me this little rim here. Now, what I'm gonna do is just point out something that if I click three here, you're gonna see that that is still fairly smooth. I need to increase these segments to two so that there's actually three edges. Again, that pattern of three edges together give me a hard edge is something that you just have to keep in the back of your minds. So if I look at this in smooth mode and I pull up the segments like that, instantly that edge there now pops into life and you start seeing that there is a hard rim around this object like that. I'm gonna press enter for a second, and if I just deselect this and go into object mode, you're gonna see that we've introduced a hard edge around the top of the plane, and then that there's a smooth edge coming through here. And again, if we wanted to manipulate this edge in any way, again, for me, it's quite easy to go back into my edge mode, grab this, go into the smooth mode, and if I just move this down, I can make this much, 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 much deeper and much more pronounced. And it's always going to be nice and smooth here. Now I might need to change some of the shapes to make it feel a little bit better, but this is a really easy way of getting this type of shape done over here. The next thing that normally we will do anytime we finish one of these sh uh, shapes is just finish with a little bit of cleanup. It's a bit of an advanced technique, but it's something that you should keep your mind working on all the time while you're working in hard surfaces. If I come over here and I go back into either my edge mode or vertex mode, one of the things I wanna do is I need to finish these faces. I'll just go to face mode for a second. And here we have a five-sided polygonal face. If I wanna fix this in any specific way, I need to make it a four-sided polygonal shape, preferably. You're gonna see that the shape looks absolutely fine even if it's got five polys. But if it's got four, it's gonna be just a little bit better for me down the line. So what I'm gonna do is introduce you guys to a new tool which is called the multi-cut tool. And the multi-cut tool is like a surgeon's tool which allows me to create cuts randomly across the surface of an object. Now you gotta be careful with the um, multi-cut tool because you can cut, as I tap across the screen, in any direction that you want. And that's completely crazy, but that is actually a surface that has been cut completely dependent on the shape of my camera. So instead of doing that, I'm gonna press the escape to go back and I'm actually gonna undo a few, a few times to just get back to my original shape. The multi-cut tool, be careful when you use it because you have to be very precise when you use it. You might think that you're clicking on a vertex and you're not. So. Anytime you're doing any type of cut work, make sure you zoom into the area that you're working in, either by zooming in with the mouse wheel or press F on your keyboard to focus on the view that you've got or frame it as you prefer. And what I want to show you is that as we roll over the vertices, we get this little red dot and the scalpel shows a little dot. If I mouse over an edge, it shows us an edge. And if I mouse over a vertex uh, face, sorry, you have a highlight of a face. So again, we're always looking for what we're cutting. So I wanna go from this vertex here, the last one of this face, and click and click on an edge over here. 
And what will happen is that I will get this line if I click and hold like that, or you'll just get a quick cut if you tap. And there we go. We have the line for that cut. Once I'm happy with it, I can press enter and that confirms my cut. And that will mean that right now in face mode, I've got a four sided face and now, hey presto, another four sided face, solving that little problem that I was showing you guys just before. So again, the multi cut tool, always be sure that you are clicking on a vertex. So wait for it to highlight and then go to the edge, make sure that the edge highlights red and either just a quick click or a click and drag will allow you to place it there like that. And again, I can now have everything in beautiful quads. Press enter and there we go. Everything is now smoothing perfectly like that. And also this allows me to model things later on. Now, why am I working in this way over here? If I just very quickly take this object here, I'm just going to isolate it for a second and I uh, like this as well. Imagine I just modeled a small part of something that I want to be much, 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 much bigger. I'm showing you this technique so that you can build things in parts. You can come here again and what I'm going to do is just come here, shift and click just to select that edge over there. And what I'm going to do now is actually just use the extrude tool, for example, and you'll see that I'll be able to make many different segments of this like that over there. So I can build an entire model based on sections like this and just extend them as and when I need them like that. The other thing is that if I wanted multiple versions of this as well, I can actually duplicate these as well, either inside the mesh or duplicate them as an object as well. And I can actually start putting these together and welding them very quickly. So you can see I can build an entire grid panel in no time whatsoever. So I'm just going to undo that again to go back to where we were before to keep these examples simple. But I wanted just to point out to you guys that these small little pieces, they can be parts of something much bigger. So let me go to show isolate select and turn isolate select off, which is hidden up there in the show panel, just in case you ever need it. And let's come over to the next one over here, right? So I'm going to grab this box over here, so this plane over here, and I'm going to turn it into this box with rounded corners over there, and importantly, with a little square cutout in the middle like that. How am I going to do this? Well, first of all, I need to make again the appropriate selection. So I'll go into face mode, double click to select all of the faces on this top side over here. Make sure that you're working in face mode and then press extrude. And with extrude, I'm just going to move it up in the Y axis like this. I'm going to switch with my keyboard shortcut R to the scale tool and I'm going to scale from the middle like this. And then I'm going to select only the inside face. That's going to give it that tapered look that I'm looking for. And then I'm going to go into extrude and I'm going to whoops, push the down arrow like that, just so I have my face extruded like that. And this again is the blocking for this piece over here. I'm fairly comfortable modeling this and I might still not have this smooth and hard surface kind of like mentality built into me, but I know that if I can get to this stage here, I'll probably be able to build everything else that I need. Okay. So after we've done this, let's just hit three and you'll see that, you know, this creates this smooth donut type shape. If that's what you're looking for, great job's done. But what I want to do is build this shape over here. So to do that, what I'm going to do is just come over here, look at these shapes over here, and I'm going to again, start adding subdivisions. Now, when you're doing this type of work, I always suggest to you guys do one part at a time. If you want to do the inside of the actual gap over here in this little box, work only on the inside of this. If you want to work on the roundness of the edges around the outside of the box, work only with the outside edges in mind. Okay. And you'll see why in a second. Now, I can use the insert edge loop tool. So what I'm going to do is use the connect tool for the outside and I'll use the insert edge loop tool for the inside. So you guys can see, but you're going to see that there's going to be a lot of parallels between the starting shape, this little box shape to building this over here, right? So because I don't want this, what I'm going to do is start off with the connect tool inside. And for that, I need to do again, some ring selections. So I'm going to come over here. That's a ring selection. I'm going to go into connect 
And again, connect is going to save me a lot of time because I need to make many, many, many of these little selections here. So I'm just going to go into pinch, might have to scale it a little bit with my middle mouse button and just switch between the radial buttons over here on the side to get that done. So there we go. We've got our edges set up like that. I'm going to press enter over there to confirm. And I'm also going to do another ring selection through here as well. And again, I'm going to hit connect and everything's already set up. So I just press enter. And then I'm going to come here to the side and again, shift and double click on the next edge over there, always checking that it's gone all the way around like that. So even if I can't see it, I'm looking at it like this and I'll press connect. And that is all of the subdivisions that I need for most of the interior. These edges here, they're still going to need a little bit of work and you'll see why in a second. So what we're going to do is again, preview this. And now you'll see that this square shape is coming to life again thanks to that pattern that I'm always telling you guys to look out. I know that anything that is an edge, if it's got two edges at either side, it's gonna give me one of those nice rounded 90 degree surfaces, which hopefully you should be noticing that there are some edges which are missing here, and there are definitely some edges which are missing down here. So we're repeating this pattern again and again and again and again. So let me do the other half this time with the insert edge loop tool, which is a great Maya tool to do this. So I know I need another set of edges here. So what I'm going to do is I'll turn on this halfway mode. And what I'll do is that I'll just click and drag. That's the edge. And here we go. That's where the inside of my box is going to get a little bit sharper. You can see that this is a very rounded edge there. I'm just going to click and drag here. And there we go, that sharpens that one right out. What about over here? I'm gonna look again on the outside here. I can always go to the lower resolution one by pressing one, and I see that how many edges do I have here? Two, I need an extra edge in this part over here. So again, I'm gonna show the preview mode. I'm gonna add an edge there, and any time that I'm doubting, I'm always looking back to the low poly version of it, just to double check that I'm gonna to have to add another edge there. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three all over, lots and lots and lots of repetition, it ends up being something that is quite second nature, because you know after a while where it is you have to place them. So let's very quickly place all the edges that we need on the outside. So we'll need an edge here, we'll need an edge here, we'll need an edge here, and we'll need an edge here, and we'll need two edges on the height as well. So all the way around, you're gonna see that pattern going all the way like that, and when I smooth this off, let me go into object mode and you guys can see there we are beautiful rounded edges very hard and a hard cut of little black inset uh, square inset inside of our box now there's also one more thing that I want to point out to you guys, which is a little bit of cleanup on these as well. Because after a while, you can subdivide your models so much that, again, there's a lot of redundant things that we might not need for the whole model. So let me just show you very briefly what I mean by that. Take this, these edges here for a second, and I'm just gonna go into this low poly version of them. And I'm gonna go into vertex mode this time, and you'll see that there's loads of three subdivisions, three subdivisions, and three subdivisions all over the place. Let me show you this little tool that's called target weld. And target weld will allow me to take vertices, or groups of, uh, of edges as well, it will work with as well, and I can actually take this edge and I can weld it hence move it to fuse with that point over there. And I'll just grab this one over here and I'll move it in like that. And I'll just, again, target weld to take one vertice and glue it effectively into another like that. So what I'm doing is very gradually reducing the number of vertices and edges that are inside of my model like that. So I'm taking these three edges and I'm combining them together into a single point. And if you ever have this pattern where there's a triangular shape, three-sided polygon face, and another three-sided polygon face, it's probably that there's an edge here that we can select and just delete. So that now is also a quad, a four-sided face. Even though it looks triangular, there's one, two, three, four sides to that object over there. So again, I'm just doing a little bit of cleanup on these two edges here, and that's reducing the number of lines that is going through my object. If I smooth this out, again, this, unless you see the wireframe, 
is completely indistinguishable from the original thing. And if I spent a little bit of time actually doing that cleanup across the entire object, as this one over here that I've done before, you're gonna see the major difference that if I look at the bottom of this object and the bottom of this object, that this one has a lot more of empty used faces. There's so many polygons down here that I don't have over here. And this is going to be very easy for me to model new parts, while this is going to be slightly harder for me to model. So it's a bit more of an advanced technique, but later on when you get good at this, you're constantly reducing the number of polygons that you're using, and you'll get very uh, capable at being able to make things like this, okay? So that's all we do with cleanup over here, and don't be afraid if you don't have time to do it. Again, if this shape looks right, it is right, and this is pretty much the effect that we want to look for. Nice, smooth faces, no pinching, no problems with surface normals, no trash of any sorts kind of like looking out there. So let's take this uh, one over here, and this one is a little bit of a challenge because it combines a few things. It takes a rectangular shape and it cuts out a circular hole inside of it. So before we were doing a rectangular hole and this time we're doing a circular hole because doing this type of stuff is going to be important to us as well. And it's really important that the shape that we use for making these is actually an octagon. If we have a surface shape that is an octagon, so if I come over here and you'll see that here's my low poly version of this. And you'll see that that is just an octagon that's been cut into this shape over here. If I smooth that out again, what's going to happen is that that octagon, when it is smoothed, is going to be a circular hole like that. So what I've done is I've created this little curve inside of Maya to serve as a guiding point. And all of that is is just a spline that is set in space and that I've placed in there. And what I'm going to do is now use the multi cut tool to cut this face open. What I'm going to do is just come over here and I am going to look for my top view. So I'm going to go into panels, orthographic, top view over here. And I'm going to press F on my keyboard to focus on that individual face because good chances you appeared somewhere over here or in another part of your space uh, of your uh, of your viewport. So if I press F focuses on the edge that I've got over here. And now what I'm going to do is use the multi cut tool. Now when you're cutting, what I suggest you do is start off by an edge and click fairly close to where you think this hexagon is going to, uh, this octagon is going to start. So I'm going to click here, click here and just click on every one of the points of the hexagon and of uh, the octagon. Don't worry if you don't get it 100% right because I even find that if you're, you know, not even perfectly octagonal, Maya will do a lot of the rounding off for you. But the more precise you can get, the better that is. After you've finished going all the way around, press enter on your keyboard to confirm that cut. And then to finish everything off in quads, we're going to grab these corners and I'm going to press enter, grab this corner, press enter. Again, I'm checking that it's going from vertice to vertice. So even before I'm tapping it, I'm mouse overing it and waiting for those vertices to highlight red. This will save me so much time because it's so easy just to go off and tap something more than once. And there you go. I've just cut something in there just because I did it quickly and not really thinking about it. So again, always wait for the tool to highlight before you confirm your cut with the left mouse button click. So we've got all of this done. And I'm just going to go into object mode over here. Sorry. And we're just going to have a look at this for a second back in the perspective view. So I'm going to go back into perspective. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is make a little extrusion for us as well. So when you have a plane, if you have faces like this, it's very easy for us to do a face extrude and just go down like this. This is what people are always used to. However, if I have an edge and I just double click on the outside edge, and this will go all the way around my object like that, 
what's going to happen now is that I can take this edge and I can also use the extrude tool on an edge like that. I can take it down like this, press R on my keyboard to bring up the scale tool and do a little taper like that as well. So it's a little bit thinner at the top than it is at the base. And again, this is the blocking for this piece over here. However, when I smooth this guy out, we've got this little kind of like dog tray type of thing, which again, if that's what you're looking for, that's absolutely brilliant. However, we're still looking not only to have smooth surfaces, but have some hard surfaces in there as well. So what I'm gonna do is come over here, and again, I'm gonna apply the same type of reasoning that I was doing before with you guys, where all of this here is just a collection of edges that I need to insert into here. So I need to subdivide this a little bit into this blocking part. Now, let me show you a few ways of doing that. Again, when we're grabbing these faces over here, if I really wanted to, I can actually create these edges as I extrude. So if I'm very comfortable knowing that I need to have an edge up here and I use the extrude tool, I know that I can draw downwards like that and there's my other edge that we were seeing before and I can extrude downwards a little bit more like that and I can extrude and this time scale from the middle like that and again that's going to add my three edges there, my edges here and that again is going to start creating this shape over here. Some of you guys just might have been very comfortable, you know, just doing a simple connect as well. So if I came into here and just deleted these very quickly as an example, again, there isn't a right or a wrong way of doing this. Grab this, double click, go into the connect tool, press enter, job's done, not a problem. And again, if you went to the, with the insert edge loop tool, they all roughly do the same thing. But here, let me show you something interesting that happens with the insert edge loop tool. I'm gonna to come into here, and again, I'm looking at this pattern, three edges for the inside, three edges at the top here. But when I look at this from the top, I can really tell that the insert edge loop tool is not giving me a regular octagonal shape, because it's a bit confused with dividing these lines over here. So you can see that this octagon shape looks really good, over here and it looks really bad over here. Importantly, we will not panic at this stage. And what I'm going to show you very briefly is another way that we can use the scale tool but using something that we call edge or surface constraints. If I scaled this normally, you'll see that I'll be able to push those edges into the actual hexagon, uh, octagon like this. I'm going to say hexagon a lot of times in this video by the looks of things. And what I want you guys to know is there's these little options over here called transform constraint, which I'm gonna turn on edge slide. We'll do this a few times. With this edge constraint turned on, now when I move this edge, you'll see that I can't move it outside of the shape. If I took a more extreme tool like the rotation tool over here, and I went into E on my keyboard and I tried to rotate this edge, you'll see it's the shape of the edge does not change. However, again, if I turn edge constraints off, you see? So the edge constraint just means that I can only move it along existing edges of the object. And this is really useful if I want to conform something to a specific shape. What I mean by that is, let's turn on edge constraints, let's turn on the scale tool, and let's scale this down until it disappears. It's still there, I still have a selection made, but it looks like it's just disappeared into the edges there. And after you stop clicking on your screen, and now you drag, now that hexagon is going to be perfect. Again, I'll do it from the top view. We have a irregular shaped object, and I wanna conform it into an existing shape. I scale it down with edge constraints until it disappears. I stop clicking with the mouse, and then I scale it out. So just that simple act of stopping to click allows me to make my object just perfectly regular again. And now that I've got these three edged type of uh, three edges again, when I smooth this out, now I've added a little solid rim into my dog bowl type of construction over here as well. Again, what we want to do now is inset this edge over here to make it a nice rectangular shape. So what I need to do is add a little bit of hard surface to the top edge, and I'm gonna have to add a little bit of hard surfacing to the edges as well. 
Now, there's multiple ways of doing this, but if I just did an insert edge loop tool, it's just going to go round in a circle and it's just going to keep making things round and round and round. I need to change the way that the shape works. So what I'm going to do is grab these edges over here and here and here and here and here and here. I should be able to double click as well, but again, working in low poly, it's very easy to select everything. And with all of those edges selected, let's go back to our handy bevel tool. And I'll hit the bevel tool. I will make a bevel of 0.1 and I will add again two subdivisions like that. So you see that I've got one, two, three edges to round those corners off. Again, just repeating everything like that. So now I've got an edge that goes all the way around the top of this shape and it has that rounded edge to it. Perfect. So I confirm that and what I'm going to do now is go ahead and add a subdivision here. Now what I don't want to do is the following. I don't want to grab all of these edges, okay? And I don't want to apply bevel to the whole shape again, because what that's going to do if I smooth it out is it's going to start creating a break over here. And this part here is now going to start looking more hexagonal. If so if you see over here, nice smooth curve. And here these corners, because I've added too many subdivisions, this over here is going to break that circular shape. So I can't allow that to happen. So what I'm going to do is go back a few steps. And I'm going to show you how much you need to select. So if I come over here, and looking at the corners of my object, I'm going to grab one, two, three edges like this, just up to the top there. And then I'm going to come around and hit shift one, two, three. And again, shift one, two, three, select all of the edges up to the end of this bevel that we made over there. And again, we're going to come into here, one, two, three. If you need to do this one at a time, by all means, do it as well. I'm just very used to making multiple selections to speed up what I'm doing. Because now when I hit bevel, it's going to apply the bevel to every corner at the same time. So I don't have to worry about it later on. So what I'm going to do here is grab my segments, add another subdivision over there, you'll see that there's a few extra faces which have been added up here. But as soon as I do that, again, this whole thing about rounded segments, and now I've got this lovely hard edge, as soon as I add one, two, three edges to every side, it's the same pattern again and again and again. And again, I'm looking for those hard edges, and I'm making sure that you guys figure out where they go as well. Okay, so that there is my rounded edges, right? Again, there's a little bit of cleanup that you should attempt to do as well. Because you can see that here, we have one, two, three edges, one, two, three edges. And again, this is a matter of choice. Now you could delete this uh, edge over here. And that would make it a four sided thing as well. But also sometimes it's just easier to take this vertex and go into the target weld and just weld that there. So that's four faces, four faces, everything should be fine. Let me just double check that. Or again, you know, I think that I've actually cut in a five sided face there. So actually, that's probably better to just take this edge over here, delete it, if I can actually select it. Hello. This one here, delete that edge, and then grab this vertex over here. And let's just push that out a little bit like that. Again, my edge constraints are still turned on. So that's actually quite handy, because it means that I can move it up and down here without worrying where it's going. And again, I can look at this in the side view as well. But you'll see in the smooth view, that edge there, even though again, it's a five sided face, because it's on a flat surface, it's not really causing any type of distortion at all. And it's still looking fairly solid. So again, this here will be our next object like that really easy. Again, anytime we're trying to cut something that's circular, just make an eight sided shape, cut it into a polygon with four faces, and you can create circles inside of anywhere. And again, the purpose of all of this is that if we wanted multiple objects, which are circular in nature, again, we can duplicate many, 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 many of these objects, and we can start combining and merging them together. So again, we can come here. And if I wanted to create multiple copies of this again, and just weld them together, I might have to delete a few faces here and there, but I can very rapidly make all types of different designs like that as well. Okay. Now this one over here is a corner 
object to an extent. And again, one of the things that we could do is that we could multiply, uh, duplicate this three or four times, and we could have you know sinks and all other types of paneling done as well. What I want to try and demonstrate with you guys here is just a simple way of being able to change the flow of the edges that we have as well. So you guys hopefully can see how that works. What I'm going to do is come into here and I'm going to start adding a few more divisions. So I'm going to come into here and again I'm going to do a ring selection there. I'm going to hit connect and this time I'm going to take my segments down to one and press enter. So I'm going to subdivide it like that and then I'm going to grab here another ring, do another connect, press enter again and what I'm going to do is again instead of an extrusion this time because I've subdivided it first, I'm just going to lift this lip up. And I, for that, I have to turn off my edge constraints. Again, if they're not off, they might be glued to the surface. So be careful. Sometimes you'll just see this little slide icon that appears on my 2016, which is really handy. And again, that will help me know if my edge constraints are turned on or off. So I'm going to come up here, grab this edge like this. And what's going to happen now is that I have, again, this little shape up here, which is the top of my ring over here. And what I want to do is just create a solid edge along these this side of the object here. And I want to create a hard, uh, sorry, a soft edge in the corners and a hard edge around the rim here and here. So how can I do that? effectively. Well, sometimes you're going to take things that are in quads already, and sometimes it helps to subdivide things again. So I'm going to show you how to take these edges here and actually cut them in a fairly, fairly, fairly easy way. So to improve the curvature of this, so I'm going to smooth it out for a second, because now it's all blobby again by pressing three, I'll go back to one. What I'm going to do is start using the multi-cut tool. Let's say I wanted to introduce another four-sided face that followed this edge that I'm just about to cut there. I'm going to go here and grab myself an edge, uh, sorry, a vertex, go to an edge over here, following roughly that line, and then I'm going to push this edge over to this side here. Actually, I'll just move it like that, a little bit like there. And I'm going to press enter like that, okay? So I've taken a cut and I've moved it over there. I'm actually going to take this vertice over here and just move it a little bit back, again, working in multiple views. And then I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to go to multi-cut again, follow roughly the angle of that edge there, and then I'm going to come here and again, I'm going to try and put that roughly there, okay? So with these new cuts here, I'm subdividing this into four faces, four faces, four faces, but I've introduced two triangular pieces over here. So if I grab this edge and this edge here and just press delete on my keyboard, now you'll see that I've taken, that's a four-sided face, that's a four-sided face, and that's a four-sided face. You could have modeled this right from the start, and again, this would be an accurate way of doing some blocking, which I would recommend to people to do as a starting point. But it's so much better to actually take all of this and be comfortable to be able to make changes as well. So as much as it not might work all the time, remember that if you're adding edges, they always have to go in specific directions. You need to keep that flow going. Because as soon as I've done this cut over here, you're going to see that it's very easy for us to create hard and soft edges. Again, if I come over here into my edge mode and I double click and double click over here, you'll see that I can select these edges. Don't select these two up here. And with that edge over there, if I want to add a hard rim to there, again, I can select those edges and I can do a bevel with a very small 0.1 over here. And again, add two more segments over there. Again, when that's smoothing, again, that's gonna give me like the top of my sink over there. And then what I do is, well, the same thing at the bottom. I can grab these two edges over here. Again, I can show you in the low poly version and just smooth that out again. And again, I'm gonna hit bevel. I'm gonna bring bevel down to 0.1 again, because I know that's a number that is going to work reasonably well. And if my mouse cooperates with me, I'll be able to get that there in a sec. There we go. Point one. And then the segments, I'm going to add two segments. And there we go. We've got a beautiful curve and some beautiful hard edges as well, right? So the last thing we do, again, checking that everything's in quads, I just want to show you what's the difference between here and here. So what happens is at the top, if I grab these three edges over here, right? 
sorry, let me just grab there, holding down shift, I'm going to grab these edges and these edges here, right? These edges at the top allow me to see what type of curve this is creating at the top, like that. And if I grabbed any one of these curves and I just moved them further apart, this curve is going to be affected. It's going to become effectively rounder slash smoother like that. Again, doing this in the low poly version allows me to look at the placement of those curves a little bit better. And then what happens if I grab these three down, these four down here, so all the edges there up until the end of the bevel there. And what happens if I bring these a little bit closer together? Again, I'm going to show this in smooth mode. So if I come over here, you're going to see that while before we had this curved shape at the bottom, if I bring this closer together again, that's going to start looking much more like, let me come over here and go back into shaded view to select that. If I bring these closer together, you're going to see that we get a tighter curve, something that's going towards more 90 degrees like that. So again, I'm going to come here, I'm going to grab that. And I'm grabbing only this section or this section, so that the curve on the top is different from the curve at the bottom over there. So when I smooth it out, you can see that although they are very closely related, that's a very tight polygon curve there. And this one is a much broader curve at the top over there. And that again, allows me to design things with different curvatures, purely depending on how far away these subdivisions actually are. So we're going to also look at these three shapes at the back as well right now. But again, even if you manage to get to this section over here of the two tutorial, it's a great starting point for you guys to be able to deliver all of these four pieces for the assessment because we're looking at very specific problems of how to create hard and soft edges. But let's take a look at what happens to the next set of shapes where you can see that some of them are easy, but this one and this one are just going to be slightly more challenging.